So this is the last example in the section in Apex Calculus on the formal definition of the limit. Um, this one, a little bit more complicated, right? We've got a cubic polynomial. We want to show that the limit as x approaches 1 of this polynomial is minus 1. Um, so I got the scratch work started. We've got things set up. So remember, the idea here is, right, uh, the definition says that for all epsilon greater than 0, there has to exist this delta so that if this dif dif difference here is less than delta in absolute value, then this difference will be less than epsilon in absolute value, right? And the nature of these quantifiers, you have this universal for all quantifier on the epsilon, means this argument has to work, be general in terms of epsilon, right? So it has to work no matter what epsilon is. The only thing we can assume about epsilon is that it's positive. Um, over here we have this delta, right? Delta we are allowed to choose, right? The, we just need to show that one delta exists, and usually we do that by actually choosing one and showing that it works. Um, now, you start your scratch work as usual. You set up this difference, right? So here I've just simplified. Uh, the double negative gives a plus one. And one of the things, you know, one of the steps you find in the textbook, it just says, oh, factor, that gets you from here to here. You might be wondering, how, how did they come up with that, right? How did they know to factor? How do they know that this is what's left over once you factor with the x minus 1? How do we know that x minus 1 is a factor, right? Um, how do we figure these things out? Well, there's a couple of things that you can do. One thing you can do is, is you realize that, well, first of all, if, if the limit of this function is minus 1, right, that's telling us that the value of this function is getting close to minus 1 when x is close to 1. And, and so you might think, okay, if x is actually equal to 1, I bet I get minus 1 if I just plug this in. And indeed, you can see that you do, right? So that means that these two are equal when x is 1, right? Which means if you put x equal to 1, this whole thing is 0, right? Now, there's a theorem about polynomials that says if you plug in a number and you get 0, then x minus that number is always a factor, right? So the reason we know x minus 1 is a factor is that we plugged x equals 1 into this polynomial and we got 0, right? 1 minus 2 plus 1 gives 0. We know x minus 1 is a factor. Um, how do you come up with the rest? Well, I mean, you could do a little bit of guessing and checking, right? You know that you need an x squared to get the x cubed, but then minus 1 times x squared, that's going to give you a a minus x squared that doesn't show up here. So then you say, oh, I need an x times x to cancel that out. And you, know, you can just kind of try to guess your way to the right answer. That might work. Um, if you want to be a little bit more systematic about it, you could always do long division, right? So we could say, let's take x minus 1 and let's divide it into x cubed minus, well, there's 0x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay? And remember how this works. We figure out what do we need to multiply x by to get x cubed. We need an x squared. x squared multiplied by this whole thing. We put it down here. x cubed minus x squared. And then we subtract. Okay, minus, so those cancel. Minus minus x squared gives me x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then again, I say, okay, x times what gives me x squared? x times x, right? And then I repeat. So x, so I get x squared minus x. We subtract. We get, so those cancel. Minus 2x plus x. I have minus x plus 1. So finally, x times what gives me minus x times minus 1, right? And then I get minus x plus 1, subtract, you get 0, okay? That might have fallen off the screen. Um, so 0 remainder. Here's the, uh, here's the quotient that results. So that's how you would come up with that if you, if you couldn't figure it out on your own, okay? So you'd... Just do plain old long division, right? Um, some of you might have also learned synthetic division, which works in a situation like this, doesn't work in other situations, so sometimes it's safer to just learn long division because it's always going to work for any sort of polynomial division problem. All right, so we've got that down. The next thing is, is the same as the last problem. We, we need a bound on this bit, okay? 
we need to make sure it doesn't get too big because we know that we can make this, this part we can make less than delta, right? Because we're going to make that assumption. That's less than delta. We just need to make sure this doesn't get too big and then we can make the whole thing smaller than epsilon. So you might say, oh, let's, let's do like last time. Let's try, uh, not epsilon, sorry, um, try delta equal to 1. Okay, so if, if x minus 1 is less than 1 in absolute value, right, that's going to give me minus 1 is, sorry, um, less than less than x minus 1, less than 1, okay? So adding 1 to everything, x is between 0 and 2, okay? Um, if x is between 0 and 2, that means that x squared is between 0 and 4, okay? And so if x is between 0 and 2 and x squared is between 0 and 4, if I add them together, that means that x squared plus x is between 0 and 6. And then I could subtract 1 from everything, and I would get that this is between, well, minus 1 and 5, which maybe isn't ideal. One of the things that you might worry about is, is you maybe don't want this to get too close to 0, right? Um, so. There's, there's a few ways that you could look at it. You could say, you know what, that's, I, let's keep it away from zero because in, in some sense, I mean, it's not quite what you're doing, but you might say, hey, you know, I want this to be like, you know, less than epsilon. And, and so then you say, okay, so delta needs to be epsilon over this number. Um, but if that, if that number is close to zero, delta is really huge. Well, okay, fine, because that means any smaller delta would also work you're more or less safe. You don't need to worry too much about it. Um, if you are concerned about it, what you could do is you say, okay, well, taking delta equals 1 gets me into some territory that feels a little bit dangerous. Um, maybe you try delta as 1 half instead, and you kind of see where that goes. And you say, okay, well, then that means that, that x would be now between one half and three halves, right? X squared would be between, um, sorry, um, yeah, X would be between, yeah, so X would be between, say, quarter and, well, nine quarters, and you say, you know what? Actually, that's not going to work because I add those together, you get three quarters, it could still be less than zero. So maybe you try, you say, okay, that doesn't work. Maybe I'll try like one over 10, something like that. Um, so you can keep trying until you get one that works. Um, one over 10 will work, right? You can try that out, you'll find it does indeed work, right? Because this will now be nine tenths, squaring nine tenths. 81 over 100, add those together, you're going to get something bigger than 1. Keeps you safe, okay? Um, so if you're worried, go with that. Otherwise, we could just say that, well, x squared plus x minus 1 is less than 5, right? Um, bigger than minus 1. Uh, if you like, that's telling you the absolute value definitely between the two of them. 5 is the larger in magnitude compared to 5 and minus 1. So this whole thing, right, it's less than 5 in absolute value. Okay, so this tells you what should work, right? Uh, we take delta to be no bigger than 1, and just like in the last one, we're multiplying by 5, so we take epsilon over 5 is the other possibility, right? And from there, the write-up is going to be more or less the same, right? So you're going to... You're going to let epsilon greater than zero be given. Um, you're going to consider delta to be the minimum of one and epsilon over five. It's just coincidence that both examples have the epsilon over five. It could be something different in general. 
and and then you go from there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you finish this one off. Um, follow the same procedure as is in the last video. Um, once you've once you've chosen that delta, assume that x minus one is less than delta in absolute value, and you show that that delta works, right? So you're gonna use the fact that delta is less than or equal to one to establish the fact that this factor here is less than five. You're gonna use the fact that delta is less than or equal to epsilon over five to establish that this factor is less than epsilon over five. So the whole thing is less than epsilon over five times five, which is epsilon, and then you're done.